Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about some one night, two more romance recommendations. <laughs> I also want to say if I sound weird in this video, I bit my tongue like an hour ago and it is not a pretty sight. It's already like purple and um, yeah. So um, if I sound weird, that is why. Anyway, let's get into these romances. These are romances where the couple have a grand old night together one night and they don't really expect things to happen afterward, uh, but they do for whatever reason. So the first one that I have is such an underrated read. Not a lot of people have been talking about this book. It came out a while ago, um, but this is Five Ways to Fall by K.A. Tucker. This was, I believe, the first K.A. Tucker book I ever read. I was very intrigued by the purple hair. So <laughs> I picked it up on a Women Barnes & Noble one day and it became one of like my first ever full romance book reads, like contemporary romance book reads. And this one is a grand old time. So the one night that happens between our heroine and here, her name is Reese and the hero's name is Ben. Um, so the night between Reese and Ben, I think they're both on vacation in like Mexico or something. They end up meeting each other and are like, why the heck not? I'm very attractive to you. But they have a little bit of a situation where <laughs> it doesn't follow through because some like um, something embarrassing happens during something okay and um they part ways after that and she is like mortified she's like it's fine though I'll never see this guy ever again guess what happens when she goes into work when she gets back from vacation guess who works at her job now Ben so this is now a like forbidden office workplace romance because the two of them are not really allowed to like fraternize with each other obviously and on top of that she's also the boss's stepdaughter. So it's like doubly forbidden. I feel like there's like a bunch of forbidden elements in here. Um, but there's many reasons why Ben should just stay away from Reese. <laughs> um, but their like one night happenstance was like iconic to me. I, I, I thought it was everything. Um, so I really enjoyed this one and I hope more people pick it up. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite books that has this trope is Ruthless Stranger by Maggie Cole. This is the first book in her Mafia Wars series. This is a mafia romance book. Our heroine here goes on vacation to, I believe, Vegas with some girlfriends. They're like celebrating her divorce from a crappy guy who cheated on her. And so when and I, when they're in Vegas, they're at like a bar or something. And she's talking to her girlfriends about this fantasy that she has about like getting with a guy, but not knowing who he is, like being completely blindfolded and knowing like nothing about him, but having a grand old night with this man. And then afterwards going their separate ways and she doesn't know who this guy is. So our heroine here who happens to be like, affiliated with the mafia maybe, um, ends up overhearing this conversation and approaches her friends when they go to the bathroom and is like, hey, I don't wanna sound creepy, but like, I would love to be that man for your friend. Um, and so they take his phone and his wallet, like they try and do as big of a background check as possible with the little time that they have. And like, they're like all good to go. <laughs> like, so they set up this like rendezvous between the two of them and they have like a, who very, very good night together with each other. And they're both devastated when they have to leave. But they're very surprised, like this other book, when they finally get back to work after their vacation in Las Vegas, they, they, they see each other. The heroine doesn't know what the hero looks like, but the moment that she walks into this boardroom, she hears this man talking and knows right off the bat that that's her man that she was with. And um, once this man sees the heroine for the first time in person outside of the situation that they were in, He's like, all bets are off. I've seen her in the real world. She is now mine. Like, this is it. I'm done. She's mine. Whew. This book is so good. <laughs> I love it. I really need to continue on with the rest of the series. But this one, ooh, I don't know if it's my favorite out of the bunch with like this one night trope, but like, it's, it's like, very much up there. Next, I have a duet because I think you need to read it as a duet. This is the um, Man in Charge duet by Laura Lynn Page. So this trope more so happens in book one, but it is a duet. You have to read them together. Like like this one ends huh, on a cliffhanger. So you, you gotta read book two. So I'm just putting that out there. Book one is Man in Charge and book two is Man in Love. Okay, so number one definitely is a one night to more situation. I just realized the past three of these are like, dealing with like workplace romances like this is another workplace romance <laughs> i was not expecting that oh my word so our characters in here scott and tessa 
<laughs> they ended up meeting one night at like um, a party and um, have like whew, this explosive time together on the roof of like the club that they're at. And then she ends up also going home with him. So they have like this one magnificent explosive night between the two of them. They don't exchange names. They don't exchange professions. Like they don't really talk about anything to do with their personal lives, but they have a grand old time with each other, right? And so they're shocked when uh, Tessa walks into like um, this company's office to work for them possibly. And it just so happens to be a company owned by the hero. They reconnect, obviously, and a lot of this book is about them trying to hide their relationship that they're having secretly. There's like even some scenes possibly in the office, okay? And, um, but there's a lot of other angsty forbiddenness going on here. Like he may or may not be lying about some things and there might be like a cheating trope or something. So like, just be aware this duet is explosive. I'll just say that. When we're talking about a paranormal romance, I need to mention Blood Moon by Gillian Graves. Um, this is the faded romance bookish box exclusive copy. So um, this isn't the original copy. This is like an exclusive cover. Um, but this is a short vampire romance novella. Our two main characters in here are Hazel and Vlad. Hazel owns this uh, bar for magical creatures and she's kind of like down in the dumps because there's this new high-end club that's opened up across the street and business is kind of going more towards that club instead of her bar and she's just really worried about it. So she goes to a party one night for Mythical Creatures to kind of like let some steam off and there she has a very good night with a vampire named Vlad. Also Hazel's a witch, I forgot to mention that. Things get a little bit complicated when um, Hazel <laughs> realizes that Vlad uh, manages the new club across the street that's taking a lot of her business and she is not a happy camper. So, <laughs> um, and Vlad could not care less. He's like this beautiful, beautiful woman. Like I had the most amazing night with her. I need more. Like I don't really care if we have rivaling businesses. I don't care at all. I want this woman. And Hanks was just like, no, you're trying to compete with me. That's not happening. <laughs> so like, she was like one and done, no, we're done. <laughs> So um, I really enjoyed this novella. If you want a fun paranormal vampire read, pick this one up. This one's also a surprise baby romance. So this is getting played by Emma Chase. Dean in here is a high school teacher and he normally keeps like a very low key life. He doesn't really do all that much. Um, but then one night he ends up meeting Lainey. They have a very good night together, you know, um, but he does not expect for uh, Lainey to get pregnant from their one night tryst. And to top it all off, <laughs> her son, like the son she's already had, who's in high school, um, like the son is in his class now. <laughs> so there's like a lot of complicated elements going on in this one. The two of them are trying to figure out a lot of things. The fact that he is her son's teacher, the fact that she's pregnant with his baby, the fact that they're still very much attracted to each other. Like, what are they going to do? How are they going to be parents together if they don't know each other? So um, <laughs> this one was an interesting read. Um, it's one of the surprise baby romances that I really enjoyed. I sometimes don't really enjoy those, um, but I feel like these two characters were very responsible and really took the time to get to know one another for the sake of their child that they're going to have, but then they also fell in love with each other throughout that process. Next is a hockey romance. We have Pucked by Helena Hunting. I really enjoy this series. You have, it's like a hit or miss for some people. Some people love this series and some people really don't like them. I'm one of the people that falls into the love category. I love this series so much. It is just so fun. This one is about Alex and Violet. So Violet's stepbrother is on this very prevalent NHL, hockey team. One night she decides to like go meet up with her stepbrother um, at like a bar they're at or something like that or a restaurant and there she meets the team captain named Alex. They're very attracted to one another right from the get-go. Violet's like what the heck why not let's just have a grand all night together. You're attracted to me. I'm attracted to you like let's blow off some steam. What she doesn't expect is after their amazing night together is for Alex to pursue her. Like he's all in, he's sending the flowers, he's sending the texts, he's calling her, like he is, who he's all in on this woman. Like she was not expecting that whatsoever. This book is so funny. Like I love how funny this book is. I know the funny parts in here aren't everyone's cup of tea when it comes to like humor, so just be aware of that. But 
I really enjoyed this one and I thought it was a great one night to more romance. I have two Christina Lauren books that I want to mention. If you don't know, Christina Lauren is an author writing duo um, and they've written some interesting romance books throughout the years. They're like more previous works like later earlier in their writing careers are definitely more steamy and I feel like Whenever this book came out was really one of the books where they started switching gears to the more closed door romances. Um, so this is my favorite Half Night Stand. This one's about Millie and Reed. So Millie has been hardcore crushing on her coworker and friend Reed for quite a while. Um, they even have this one night together that just really reinforces those feelings that she has for Reed. And then starts an accidental catfishing situation where the two of them match on a dating app because they need a date for this benefit going on at the museum they work at, I think. The heroine, Millie, figures out really fast, like, oh, this is Reed. You get to read about it and, like, what the ramifications are for her not telling Reed right from the get-go. So, um, but this was an interesting one night to more kind of situation. So um, definitely a unique one out of the bunch on this list. Another Christina Lauren book is Sweet Filthy Boy. So in this book series, this is a part of the Wild Season series, you have three girlfriends and three guy friends. Like these people all know each other and these people all know each other. Um, and they all decide to vacation in Vegas. And that's where they all meet each other for the first time. They all get <laughs> shoisted and um, all three of them like match up with somebody and get drunkenly married to someone. Um, so our heroine in here happens to be one of the women and our heroine is one of the guys in that situation, obviously. Mia and Ansel actually do have like a one night <laughs> happenstance between the two of them on their wedding night. <laughs> and um, when they wake up, they are like mortified. Um, and there are two other like groups of friends, like they immediately get uh, like an annulment, like they're not married anymore. Um, but you know what? <laughs> Mia wants a little bit of adventure. Ansel is from France and he has to go back to France after their vacation. And she's like, how would you feel if I go to France with you? And you, we, we just figure this out. Like I want a little bit of, of an adventure. So thus starts their romance. <laughs> Another like unique one out of the bunch. So um, I really did enjoy this one as well. And this one is more of their earlier work. So it's a little steamier than you would get in this book. The last two books that I have to mention are both a part of the Misadventures like collection. These are just books that are written in this series called the Misadventures series, but they have like nothing to do with each other and the authors are all like different. So Lauren Rowe wrote this book, which is Misadventures of a College Girl. Um, our heroine in here is in college and she really decides that she doesn't want her V card anymore. So she wants to get like give it up <laughs> to a um, experienced guy. Like she just wants to play, wants a play boy. She can like have a grand old night with and like rid her hands with afterward. Like she just wants it to be like done. <laughs> so she finds out that this guy at this party that she's at is the guy that's going to probably fill the bill. Like I think on their way to getting together, um, she ends up letting it slip that she's never been with anybody before. And he's like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Like what? Um, and she's like, okay, fine. If you don't want to be with me, I'll go be with someone else. And he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, okay. And so I think they have like a uh, one night, one night stand with each other. Um, and she's just like, okay, cool. Nice. That's done with. I'm going to go now. <laughs> and for some reason, this woman is like stuck in his mind for like the campus playboy. This one little virgin is stuck on his brain. So um, he is confused as to why he wants to get to know this woman more. And the other one that I wanted to mention is Misadventures of a City Girl by Meredith Wilde and Shell Bliss. Our heroine in here, I think she's getting over a divorce or a breakup. So she decides to take a little vacation in the mountains, maybe in Colorado, I don't remember. Um, but she's at this like resort and she goes on these trails, is walking along the trails and comes across this spring and decides to get in her birthday suit and just go sit in this hot spring. Um, she doesn't know that this hot spring is actually on <laughs> a man's property. And this man shows up and he's like, what are you doing? This is my property and you're not wearing any clothes. <laughs> like what's going on? I um, mean, she's mortified. She is mortified to say the least, but then a snowstorm starts happening and she is stuck in his home with him. And um, it's a forced proximity situation during a snowstorm. And they're like, what the heck? I'm actually very attracted to you. So let's have a grand old time together during this snowstorm. And they don't really expect anything to come out of it afterward, but it does. Like they 
can't keep their hands off each other. They don't want the other person to leave. They don't want this snowstorm to be over. He doesn't want her to go back down the mountain to go back to the resort or to go move back to the city. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some one night, two more romance recommendations for you. Let me know down below if you've read any of these or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me, I don't know, like a mountain, a mountain emoji. <laughs> Cause this last book took place in the mountains. So um, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.